Hi everyone, Kim here from Sunshine Creations and Crafts. And um, I just thought about this, I saw these jars at uh, Beverly's and I thought, oh, I know what I wanna do with those. So um, my first thought was something different than how it actually turned out, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and make one of these here on this video and hopefully I can get it all done. I'm gonna be selling these at my son's high school fundraiser. Okay, so I'm starting out with this basic jar. And um, if you guys watched my last video that had the corn husk on it, I said that I was going to be making another project with corn husk. And this is it. So I'm going to put score tape in the middle of the jar. And I'm going to try to get it so that it goes around and it ends up. Let me pop this up a second. Um, even Steven. So I did. Yay. Grab my scissors and cut it. Doesn't have to be even because nobody's gonna see it. All right, then I'm gonna come over here and ta-da! Get in my corn husk again. Take my pinking shears and there's two stuck together, but that's okay. And I'm gonna cut. Oh, I'm gonna say uh, what is that about? Two inches, maybe inch and a half. Like that. And then I'm going to cut these in little strips. Move that aside. Like this. And I'm not at all concerned about it being perfectly straight or even or anything like that. I'm just trying to get the strips done. Okay. That should be enough. If not, I can cut some more. Then I'm going to take my score tape and make sure that it's pushed down real well. Take this off. Oh, look at some little guy got stuck in there. And then I'm going to take my corn husk and I'm going to place it right in the middle of that score tape. Pushing it down really hard. And it's going to go all around. You see how I'm kind of zigzagging it so that it's not all in a straight line? I know I'm having a hard time with it since um, I have OCD. I want to make it all straight. But it looks cuter when it's not. So Now if you want to... Um, use your uh, Tim Holtz tea dye or any other kind of distress ink and distress these before you put them on. You can do that. But I chose not to do that because I'm going to wrap a piece of burlap around it so you're not really going to see that distressing detail. And that piece will go right there. Okay, so here I have this burlap that I Cut, cut, but I'm going to cut it down a little bit. I just want to do a quick length measurement. And then it's too wide and kind of crooked. Now for this one, I do not want it crooked, so I'm going to try my best to do it as straight as possible. And I don't want it too wide. I can use this one for another one. Then I'm going to take some more score tape. I want to make sure that that's going to go on there, not look too funny. Oh, you know, I'm not even going to do that. I'm just leave it like that. All right, so there I go, bumping the camera again. So I'm going to put my score tape across here and I'm pushing down real hard. Now, this gets tricky because glue will go right through it. Unless you want to put a backing of like a solid piece of material on there and then you could put your glue on that solid piece of material. Um, or you could just use your score tape. And I'm going to wrap that around. This is the front of my jar. So I'm going to wrap that around kind of in the middle. And I have to hold it like this until I wrap it and then I'll lift it up and show you guys. Okay, so that's wrapped around. And then um, I used one of my 40% off coupons 
went into Michael's, I was looking for um, something totally different, but I ran across this Ruffia, and it all came in one package. I think I might have the original bag here, yeah. Well, there it is. Um, Ashland. And I found it in a section where you get like the seashells and stuff like that. So this is all that I got. And for this project, I'm going to be using um, the green and the rust color. So we'll put those out of the way. And um, it's kind of folded up. So if you want to use it, you want to take it apart. And then you can fold it back when you go back to store it. I want to make sure I have enough that's going to go around the jar, but I only want, oh, maybe three pieces of it. We don't want to make it too bulky. I'm just trying to line this up. That should be good. And I'm going to tie it, so I want to make, oh, I'm going to say that's about 18 inches. It's okay to cut it over. Okay, I'm done with that. I'll get that out of the way. But I'm going to do the brown as well. So let's get the brown, or rust color, I guess you call it. And, oh, I'll take a couple pieces of that. Try to make it the same, but you're going to trim it up anyway, so not a big deal. I'll go about right there. I'm not going to move that one too far because I'm going to use that one for something else in a minute. Okay, so then I'm going to take this, and you don't need, I mean, you can maybe spray some glue on it. I'll, I'll do that off camera here for a second. Just to kind of help it adhere, but it's not necessary if you don't have it. I'm going to try to get that in the middle. And I'm going to tie it. It would have been easier for me if I would have made the length a little bit longer. Try to get all that through. There we go. Pulling it real tight because I want to do a knot. I got burlap stuck in my hand. I like this raffia. Yeah, I don't know, it just adds something really neat to your projects for your fall stuff. I love those colors. Oh, that burgundy color. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not going to worry about it being like the perfect knot or anything. Because I'm going to trim it up in a minute. i got to grab a wipey here because my hands are sticky. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is the fun part. We are going to fill our jar with candy. So these are just mini Snickers probably can't hear me because I'm crumbling. So I'm going to put that about right there so that you can kind of see it on the bottom. And then I'm going to go over to my corn husk and I'm going to, well, there it is. I'm going to draw. I am so sorry. Why do I keep doing that? i got to find another way to do this camera thing. I'm just going to quickly draw a circle. And that's two pieces, which I don't need for this. And I'm going to cut inside that circle line because you don't want to see that black mark. You don't have to use a black marker. I just had it there handy. I'll shape this up a little bit. All right. I want to separate. I want to put something in between here. I'll show you why in a second. My hand is still sticky because I'm going to put candy corn and I don't want the candy corn to fall down into the chocolate bars. So that's why I put the corn husk there. All right, now before I close it, I used my Mod Podge and I made out of this uh, remnant that I bought, I don't remember where, but I had it in my stash. Um, I Mod Podged the flowers. And as you can see, they're real stiff. And I did this a couple hours ago. It does take a while for it to dry. Um, I thought I would try to cheat and use my um, heat gun, <laughs> but 
logic tells me, well, when you put heat on glue, it's going to make it sticky. So I guess I didn't have any logic at that point, but now I do. And I'm just going to trim. It doesn't have to be perfect. Trim around the edges. I'm doing this pretty fast, don't you think? Woohoo! So much for editing, huh? You don't need to edit. Just kidding. And I put that right there. And I'm going to close my lid on to like that. So you can kind of see the flower through there. And if you get it in evenly, which I did not, you can kind of see the petals sticking out as well. Look at that. How cute. How cute is that? Okay, but I'm not done. It's tag time. Um, I went through my stash because I wanted to put a tag on here. Let's trim this up while we're at it. Um, I wanted to put a tag on here, but all the ones that I had, it was just so big. So I found these actually in my stash. And I don't even remember buying these, but they're uh, creative tags from, collection, uh, from Recollections. And what I did was I grabbed my little craft mat and I grabbed my Tim Holtz tea dye and did a little bit of distressing like so and I thought mm, that's kind of boring so I grabbed out my field paint and my little finger dauber and I put some green on it Then I went into my supply closet where I keep all my um, holiday stuff and I pulled out my Thanksgiving goodies and I came across this stamp, which I have not used yet. I bought this last year. Look at that cute little scarecrow and then the pumpkins and all that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get our memento ink and I have a tendency of using both sides of my acrylic block, which is fine. I'm going to stamp this little guy. I'm going to make sure that the crow gets stamped. I think I messed up. I may have to go. Yeah, didn't get his head in there. All right, let's see if I can get his little head in there. It's because of the tag there. Hmm. Okay, we'll leave it like that. And then I'm going to take some white cardstock. Go with my memento ink. And I'm going to stamp out my pumpkins and then I'll put that right there. I'll do the autumn as well. Oh, I don't like the way that autumn turned out. Kind of got smeary. Let's go up here. Okay. Set that aside. And then before I um, cut the pumpkins out. I'm going to come over to my Copics, which is the YR04 and YR07. And I'm going to color my pumpkins. Just like so. And it's okay that I'm going out because I'm going to be cutting those in a second. And then let's do some shadowing. Come up here from the bottom. And cut these out. I could have put a little bit of green on that stem, which I might go back and do. Concentrating. I can't cut and talk at the same time. <laughs> We're almost done. This may end up being a 20 minute video. Okay, then I'm going to grab my handy dandy glue. Oh, before I do that, come over to my 
burlap and I'm going to cut about that much off there. Get out my score tape. Put a piece right across the bottom of that tag. My acrylics just don't like that score tape. I'm going to use this one here. I'm upside down. And I'm just going to lay that burlap right there. Back to the glue. Lop, lop there. I'm using this because it sticks better onto the burlap. Put that little guy there. And uh, the other pumpkin is now missing. Oh, there he is. Blop, blop, blop. I like my sound effects. And I'm going to put this guy right here. Oh, but we're not done. We need to color this guy. So here's what I'm going to do. I have um, all these Copics right here that I chose from. And I got his pants in YR24. Uh, no, I didn't. Those are too dark. I did his pants. Yes, I did. Okay, we're just gonna... I should have written this down. YR24. It's like a golden color. And um, I, I'm not too concerned about too much shadowing on this guy and um, his hat and the brim and then um, that is it for the white R24 then I'm going to take the really really dark E29 and I'm going to color in his patches He only has three of them that I saw. And we have to do his face. I'm kind of doing this in just any random order. This is E00. And I'll just give him a little bit of shadow right here. And then I'm going to go back to that dark brown, which is E29, and do his nose. All right, now I've got this really great green. This is a YG67, and I'm going to do his hat. And I'm also going to do his little jacket. I can go ahead and try to do a little bit of shadowing, but I, like I said, I'm not really too concerned about that. It's such a small image. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in with my yellow. And this is Y19. I'm gonna do his hair. And this little, just take a second so I can trim those off. Do his little Feet, I guess you would call it, huh? And then his scarf is going to be in the E15. Okay, now, oops, I'm going to do something kind of cool. I'm going to take my um, colorless, <clears throat> excuse me, colorless, colorless blender, and I'm going to make it look like his hat is straw. I'm just applying some light pressure until I start seeing the, just the color changing at the very tip. You might be able to see it when I'm done here. I'll hold it up closer. And I'm going to do the same thing down here with his pants. So that's got little stripes in it. And in his patches, if I just hold the blending pin down for a few seconds, it makes 
little dots. And I think that was it for the pack, for the Okay, so I need my autumn and I want to go ahead and move that aside for a second. Put a little bit of brown on that first. I had stamped my autumn twice because of this one here, this first one, I didn't like how it smeared, but I don't like how the black ended up there. So with this one, we're going to go ahead and just use the first one that I stamped. I'm just going to hand cut this around. I think this is probably the longest video that I have ever done. I wanted to get this all done in one, that's why. But I did do some prep work ahead of time, so because I knew it was going to take a while. And then I'm going to put my autumn across there. And then, like I said, I was going to use the raffia again. So I'm just going to grab, um, I don't know, maybe about that much of this color, the rest. And I'm just going to do a little bit of the green. And I probably cut about eight, six to eight inches so that I can put, pull this through, but then I need to tie it onto my jar. So if, in fact, I did cut this too short, um, to tie it onto my jar, I will recut it. But let's, let's check and see what's going on here. Pull that through. And there is no place to really tie it. Um, my green did not cooperate there. I'll just go up and tie this here. There's really no place to tie it on the section of the jar that you open to get your candy out. So I went ahead and went around to the back and just looped it through this one here. And for the purpose of finishing up this video, I'm going to just show you how I tied it, but um, I'm actually going to make a bigger, longer string when I finish it off here. So, but anyway, you get the idea. That always happens to me. Um, here's the little tag, little scarecrow guy, and then your little candy jar. And that is it. So another little fun thing. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks all for being patient. Bye.